Mr. Men, what you doing? Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Talking Smack, where we talk superheroes, movies, animation, and comic. I'm your host, Josh Scar, and joining me this week is the vivacious Matt. Matt, how you doing? I'm feeling vivacious and fancy free. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing okay, all things considered. And we are also joined by the one, the only, the spunky Becky. How you doing? Oh, I got spunky. Well, now I'm doing great. <laughs> Excellent. It was terrible before, but now she's spunky, so it's great. Yeah, now I'm feeling spunky. Yeah, I had a triple rhyme in there too. It was the nice. the it was only good. the spunky, the Becky. <laughs> Those don't really rhyme. Oh, man. Long, Get long out ease here. at the end. Come on. Let me have it. I'm not a songwriter, I'm not a poet. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I mean, seems like we're very talkative tonight, so uh, we're just going to get straight into our promo. We are going to hear from Antonio and Deanna over at the MILF and Me podcast. And when we come back, we're going to do everyone's favorite Talking Smack segment, What You Doing? We'll be right back. Face it, dating sucked in your 20s, gets worse in your 30s, and your 40s, forget it. It's a cesspool out there, and we're your flotation device. Join us weekly for saucy chat, ridiculous love gurus, and MILF-worthy fun to spice up your life. The MILF, Milf and, and Me podcast. podcast. Every Wednesday on your favorite pod platform. And the MILFandMePod.com. The MILF, Milf and, and Me podcast. podcast. And we are back. Becky seems perplexed by that promo. Is it, is it MILF and me? Yeah, it's or Antonio it... and Deanna. Not MILF. De oh. Not you, MILF in Which one is the MILF is up to you. I thought, it was, I thought it was the MILF in me. And I was like, wow, that's a bold title for a podcast. <laughs> Damn. And then I was really, really listening. And I was like, I think I heard that wrong. <laughs> you definitely heard it wrong. But I mean, okay, maybe well, that's what they're going for. Good for them, though. Both are fine. Good for them, yeah, though. Yeah, both are fine. Anatomically speaking, it's probably correct. So it's a science <laughs> podcast as well. They didn't pay for this, did they? If so I'm so no, sorry. No, they, they did not pay for it. But I'm sure Antonio will uh, send me some some notes on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's copy we're supposed to read. You got to give it to us first. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to do what you're doing. It's our favorite filler episodes uh, that we get to do every now and again, where we just talk about the nerdy stuff we've been doing away from the podcast and. And we make it about the podcast. So uh, everything is content, and that's what this premise is all about. So uh, let's get things started. Uh, Becky, what you doing? Hmm. Nerdy things. Not a lot of boys that are nerds. Maybe I should look into that. Actually, Josh knows I just finished The Dragon Prince, and I just started on Voltron. It took me forever. I know. Josh was like, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. And then I've been my telling Matt the same today. thing for a while. Finally today, my brain was like, you are allowed to do that now. And I was like, I am. And it was like, you are absolutely allowed to push that button. And I was like, oh, sweet. Awesome. And it was, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I like How many it episodes did you get in? Eh, uh, let me look and see. Oh, someone sent me a picture of a cat. Well, don't talk about dick pics on the podcast, please. I, I would not accept any dick pics. It, it was definitely just a cat. <laughs> Season one, episode nine. Oh, wow. Yeah. You, you got I was through doing, a lot. I, was watching, I did get through a lot. I was doing my dishes, and I just carried it with me everywhere. <laughs> That's what you do. That is yeah. what I do. Voltron's a lot of fun. I, I highly recommend it to anyone that hasn't seen it. It's uh, the new Netflix version, uh, Voltron Legendary Defender. The animation team behind it or the animation studio behind it is the same one that did uh, Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra. That explains why I like how it looks. I was like, I like this and I don't feel threatened by it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to finish the sentence and like in parentheses as a boring, basic white person? <laughs> I don't That's see a pumpkin spice really. latte, so I think you're okay. It's I, just, my name is Becky, though. It's, pretty it's bad. just off camera. 
<laughs> it, yeah, all the way off that side. With my, it's in my Uggs to keep it warm. I would never. It comes but earlier and earlier every you year. Have not, not, you have not bothered? No, no I'm a grown-up. Right. I don't watch cartoons. I, I am also a grown-up. I love cartoons. What do I want to watch? Real people doing real life shit. I want to watch fake people doing fake life shit. He needs a watch along podcast that's four hours long. Yeah, he said so, I was. So we need to only, we need to create our own watch along podcast, Becky, that he can listen to. Or I, well, no, if we're doing it, he won't listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be he'll be like me. His brain will not do it out of the principle of the thing. <laughs> only only one of the podcasts I listen to is sometimes, occasionally, four hours long. And it's it's all it's all gold, baby. Five star run times. Um, yeah. That's so long. That's so <laughs> when long. When it's good, it's good. Sometimes you just really need people to to get into just how bad the D Squad arc of Clone Wars is, and it takes a while to get through it. Like four hours. Sometimes, yeah. This might be a movie versus TV thing, because I'm like, ah, two hours and two minutes, I am not sitting down to watch that movie. That's ridiculous. Will I watch five episodes of Shameless? Absolutely. Back to back to back? Sure. It's longer. <laughs> Why is well, that okay? But you I don't can, understand. You can theoretically dip out at any point. That is that is true. There's lots. There's a lot more it's built hard in. It's that in a movie break periods where it's like oh there's an episode i gotta do something else or oh yeah it's just another half hour i could do i could do one more yeah, i could do this a little bit longer yeah. and then all of a sudden you're like oh fuck i'm nine nine episodes in but that does <laughs> that does institute binging which i think is a sin i know Binge, you're not a binger binging media is a crime and i think everyone I am should binger. be forced to not do it at gunpoint you should be forced to do it at gunpoint <laughs> So Matt's cool with the whole wait for another week for the next episode to come out. I don't I don't want to derail us any more than we already have, but like um This is nerdy. That's just back in my day that's that used we used to call that TV. And we had it <laughs> we had it figured out and it's good and it works and it's correct. He's not wrong. I, I, I not, prefer the week he's to not week. Wrong. Some some things I think are meant to be like spaced out. I was just I just had this thought on a walk the other day where I read so fast. I've read seven books so far. It is the ninth in your life. Yeah, this month. (laughs) But my thought was, are books written to be read that quickly or not? I would say they're self-paced. I, like, are they like are are would some books be better if I put them down and actually took a pause and then got back to it? Are they meant to be read cover to cover as quickly as possible? I don't know. That's a good question. I think I think a, a book is a thing that I th- it like Josh said is very self paced where it's like wow, whatever pace you want to take. But actually, my the the four hour podcasts and my stance on binging dovetail quite nicely because when i have something that is fully in front of me like you give me seven seasons of a show 25 episodes a piece all in front of me i get overwhelmed i i get stressed who's got the time for that that's like 100 hours of television but if it's spaced out week to week or if i can find something to latch that structure onto like a podcast that comes out once a week, once every couple of weeks, and they cover an episode, two episodes, three episodes, whatever. I can structure my viewing so it's almost like I'm watching it the way God intended, <laughs> which is like something resembling week to week where I'm not just watching 10 episodes and then getting distracted by something shiny and never watching it again. I do, that's it. I, mine's the opposite of. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Yeah. If I stop, I probably won't go back. And not to derail us too far off everything. We're already and, derailed. Um, there, there's, a, there's, a, <laughs> there's a writer's strike going on. So like, there's going to be a big delay oh, yes. in a lot of stuff uh, and an actor's strike. But um, one problem that I've been encountering recently is uh, Ted Lasso is a really good example of this. 
where the current format of how they release TV shows for the most part, Ted Lasso was week to week, mm -hmm. but with the way they, they format the streamers, it takes them a year, a year and a half to film and you lose all momentum if you're not releasing in a seasonal format. So like seasons one and two of Ted Lasso came out in 2020, 2021, and then season three came out in 2023 because they took so long between COVID protocols and filming and trying to make sure everything was done as well as it could. As well as it could being the, uh, the, the emphasis. <laughs> I have strong feelings about that season. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it definitely wasn't as strong as season one or season two, but I still think it was pretty solid. But uh, apparently Bill Lawrence was not around to kind of help keep everything in line like he had been. Uh, he was working on Shrinking, which th Shrinking is uh, one I talked about in a previous What You Doing. Strongly recommend it. Uh, but like getting back on point with this, uh, The Witcher is another one where Netflix, for whatever reason, decided to release like the first five episodes of season three. And then they waited like a month and a half to release the final three episodes for whatever arbitrary reason. I don't know why. That they just is, decided to release a, the last three episodes. To me. So like, why not just make it week to week? Make it a tech because The Witcher sucks anyway. So like just make people wait. Used to be, uh, you know, a show would start in September and you'd watch it after school, after work, whatever. And then you get the summer off and maybe the season would end with some big cliffhanger and you'd be like, oh gosh, what's going to happen? I might have to come back in the fall and find out. And, you know, we used to be a real country. And yeah, now... gargoyles, episodic television, and grand balls. All gone. Yeah. It's a yeah. shame. There you really know, I, should be more gargoyles. You know, I, I guess we kind of got off on a several tangents, but Becky, how do you, how do you like these shows? that you have been watching. It's, you mentioned that you are watching them and then we started talking about our bullshit. I love your bullshit. <laughs> I, I want, that's all I want is to listen to men talk about stuff. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I did not, uh, I did not like, what, what did I actually watch that? The binging did not work very well. Seinfeld. And well, Seinfeld's not very good. Shameless. So, <laughs> I it, I don't think it's very good either. I feel like if I watch like an episode and then let it like, you know, let it do its thing and then come back. I think when I'm watching those ones, I'm looking for something where I can like have it on in the background and go do something, walk and leave, like just have the TV on. But I, I don't, I can't do that anymore. Yeah. Regular TV, which I just like the other day tried watching. I don't understand it anymore. <laughs> like, I survived has its own station. It's only I survived all fucking day. And then it's the same five Geico commercials in a row. Uh, well, how is that a thing? I do not understand. I love that. And here's why. Like I will sometimes tune in to, to Pluto TV, which is a, an app. It sounds like a similar kind of app where it's like they've got a bunch of channels and whatever channel it is, for the most part, it's just showing that thing 24-7. They've got like an anime channel. They've got two Star Trek channels. They've got a classic Doctor Who channel. And you tune in at any point, they're showing. That's just what they're showing. You, you don't, maybe you're going to find an episode you like, maybe you won't. And that is like a thing where, oh, it's the morning. I'm just eating breakfast and killing time before the day. Oh, this is a cool episode of Star Trek. I can sit and watch that. I love that. That's beautiful. I think that's wonderful. And that's how it I used like, to be. I like that. I don't like the commercials. That has really weirded me out. If it was a bunch of random ones, like it used, like when we were a proper country, <laughs> but I, yeah, I'm like, I just watched this and it yeah. goes on again and then it plays again. And then a third time. Why is that a thing? Yeah. On Pluto, it's more like you're going to get the same, like five or six commercials and you may not but see do every they cycle them. Yeah. You may not see every single one, every break. But like, if you if you sit and watch, oh, Star Trek: The Next Generation's out. I'm gonna sit and watch an episode. Within like the four or five commercial breaks, you're gonna see, though, like most of those six multiple times. That's so weird to me. Cause remember what, what channel? Remember they used to do like a, like a funniest commercials or whatever, like as an award. It was like a whole big thing on TBS, right? 
Yeah, TBS. Anybody remember that? Yeah, TBS, TBS used to like ah the. But I like TBS is a good station, um, channel, whatever. But when they did like funniest commercials, like you were like, oh, I really like this commercial, and you'd have to like hope that you could see it again. It was like a rare, it was like a rare Pokemon. Like you're like, no, not that one. I want the Doritos one, and like you just wouldn't see it for ages. And then it would come on, and you'd be like, Dad, this is the one that's really funny, yeah. and it's. Yeah, we're missing that. I do miss There's, that. That used to be really They fun. had to retire that after uh, Kmart came out with their Shipped My Pants uh, ad. Shipped My Pants? I don't remember that one. There, there's, oh. there's beauty yeah, and impermanence. And that we used to know that. There's beauty it's and strong. impermanence, and we used to know that. Yep. <laughs> and so, now... okay, so, yes or no on these cartoons? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I the dragon the dragon prince I like I was telling Josh earlier is a little campy for my taste like it almost it, it almost scaled down to like almost too young like I don't know the things that are happening in it are terrifying but the way that like the acting is it's a little bit over the top and like super dramatic and like they hug after every fucking scene yeah, well, it's Stop from the, all the time. It's, it's from one of the lead writers from Avatar: The Last Airbender, which is why I was surprised because there's a little bit of that in Avatar, but once you get to season or book two, that stuff's like fucking gone. Oh no, they like, still hug. They the the hugging continues throughout. It's not as like, oh no, what is wrong? Quickly, and then what? Why do they never remember to say fate? Ever. Not once. <laughs> Why is he hanging out with those guys? I feel like I identify with bait the most. <laughs> They're like, this horrible thing's about to happen. Oh, shit. We got to go get the defenseless animal that we just left behind. <laughs> It'll happen three times in one episode. And you're just like, they couldn't think of anything else to make this more exciting. However, the story was good. And I like the animation. I think it's very interesting and different. The French accents are atrocious. <laughs> Hate hate all of that that's really dumb but they're like in a fantasy world where there's no france right so they're not french accents yes strictly speaking but like they're all the elves are like separated into their own little things so they all have very specific accents and it's like i understand and then also i heard the french for the first time and i was like well that's painful that's pretty bad that's pretty bad it's not but great I, mean, I guess what i mean is but i did enjoy watching it it's not really French, so who's to say if it is a bad accent or not? Maybe that's a that's perfect true. accent in that weird elven. Yeah, maybe they're just coming up with whatever shit they want to do. That's fine with me as well. That's fair. And then this is how I watched Voltron, other than, and when I was texting Josh, I paused so that I could make sure that I was actually <laughs> watching. But I watched it like this. And then when I was doing my dishes, it's a podcast, so of course I'm doing physical comedy. When I was uh, doing my dishes, I was watching it like this, like, had my dishes. I was trying to figure out where to put them so I didn't my, have to stop watching. <laughs> my me being very, very engrossed for the listeners yes. at home. Becky seemed very engrossed. Super into it. Trying not to break I, her dishes while she washes watch, them like this. and watch. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stepping over the dog who's laying at my feet as I'm trying to do the dishes. He didn't seem to care about that one. And I finished. What's the other one I finished, Josh? She Ra. She Ra's good. I, they should have killed Catra. That's all I'm saying. Wow. I she's hope probably I, the, she's the worst character. I hope you're ready for your ass <laughs> to get roasted on the internet for that. Go, I'm for good. That. <laughs> she's not a good character. You cannot convince me she is. She's a brat. She's super rude. They she's are, awful. They she never gets better. You. They're coming for you. She They're typing. never, ever actually gets better. That sound you hear is the, a thousand people that's going right now. Come, Come at me. Go, and also the names. I would watch it. I'd be like, okay, it's Catra. I get it. <laughs> I mean, it is based on like a, a toy commercial cartoon from the 80s. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. It is from the 80s. I remember when everybody was given uh, she who must not be named because Matt's in this discussion shit about uh, the character names in Harry Potter because they're about the same. You can oh, the say turf. Right. You're, you're, you're talking about the person. turf. <laughs> yeah. She's a horrible name. Where you're just like, wait, is it? Did you name this person like, oh, I get it because she's the plant one. That's why that. But I, I do think that those kinds of names are clever. But when they said a door for the first time, I was like, I don't know if I can watch this. 
I don't know if I can immerse myself into this world where they're named Catra, like the laziest thing they could possibly think of. You were okay with Kingsley Shacklebolt. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great name. Let's not break it down. Name. Let's not break down it's where she got those name. ideas um, for that character. Um, I know. When you read that, you're like, ah, oh, oh. But Catra is too far for you. <laughs> it's a little on the cat nose. And I like cats. Seamus Finnegan is is good is good. <laughs> no, that's not a good name. <laughs> Seamus Finnegan is a bad, bad name. Seamus Finnegan, the Irish man the, the Irish student who likes to blow things up. Yep. <laughs> Just hmm. likes to set things on fire. And where'd anybody you, who's fat has like the worst name ever. Where'd, where'd you get that one, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, they're pretty bad. Uh, all right, Matt, what you doing? Besides giving Becky a hard time about her, <laughs> her life choices. Just my TV choices. I kid because I love. I wasn't. Well, I was ex- just expressing my preference for how to view TV. What am I doing? Well, I've, I've got a six month old. So what I do is very nebulous these days try to survive try to thrive you know i think i talked about this at the a previous what you doing um but it has come along a fair ways a bit now but i've really been digging the um star trek comics that idw is is putting out I and mean, i'm being a cliche for me on this show but they currently have a two like flagship title well, they have a flagship title which is just called star trek it's like the main book and then there's another saw another book in the like the two main series uh called star trek defiant which are um you know sort of stories that are comics that are doing their own thing but they are sort of tied together um one spins out of the other and they're currently in the midst of like a big crossover that is happening over the summer yeah i've talked about it before but it's a very cool series especially for somebody who is a big dork about this stuff um you know they're pulling in they're doing lots of things that like for various reasons like a star trek show is probably not going to get to either because like it was not well received enough to for anyone to ever care to follow up on it or like all the actors have aged out of doing like a reasonable follow-up or something i know that's very vague um and i feel like i'm you know, I'm, I'm kind of off the cuff here, so I feel like I'm not explaining it well, but it's just a very cool series that feels, I think, a lot a lot of times, like, I keep up with the, the Marvel Star Wars comics as well, and I think a lot of those feel very, um, what's a nice way to say bad? Uh, they tread water. They tread water a lot. They feel very inessential. In contrast, these Star Trek comics don't necessarily feel essential, but they feel like they're doing interesting things that, um, and part of that is, you know, the, the, the Marvel stuff is keeps, keeps setting itself in between movies. So it feels like it's very bound. Like you can't do anything interesting because they are set in this narrow period between the more interesting stuff we've already seen where, you know, the, the, the main Star Trek comic is about, um, Cisco, who the, who is the captain from the show Deep Space Nine, um, Leo's favorite bus stop. Leo's favorite bus stop. <laughs> anyway, like he's he's having a whole adventure that follows up on the events of that show Deep Space Nine, and it's a thing where like for various reasons, like I think Avery Brooks, who played Benjamin Cisco, doesn't really act anymore. So like odds are we are not going to get a sh- like a show with him. Or like him to cameo in another show. So like it's a cool way to like do a follow up with this character that that isn't bound by, okay, the man's 70 now. Or here's all the characters who are alive at this time or whatever. It's just, it's very cool. I like it a lot. And I think they're they're into like issue 10 or 12 or something like that. Um, And Defiant is slightly behind that because it came out a few months later. But it is cool stuff. I know that. Neither of you guys have any frame of reference for this. So there's no follow-up questions that can be had, probably. Well, the only question I had was going to be what era of Star Trek is it set? But you've already covered that. Yeah, it's set sort of like in in the period where like 
the TNG movies are happening because there are characters who die in those movies who are in the comics because they're still alive in this time period, things like that. I think I was late to the whole sci-fi game. It's only it, recently. It's never, it's never too late to, like, to get into sci-fi. You just got to find the right subgenre for you. To follow up on what I was saying before, Star Trek The Next Generation is like the perfect TV show. And if you are, if you really want to, I can help you with that. Can I binge it? Or will you only <laughs> will you only find me episodes once a week? What what you do in the in the privacy of your own home <laughs> is not for me to judge. Are, are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Are, are you sure? <laughs> Come on. I feel like Matt is having a Theo Vaughn moment. I'm not going to judge you, but everybody else is. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't understand that like, reference. Don't, don't put that evil on me. <laughs> I feel like, do either of you understand the Theo Vaughn reference at all? Nope. I feel like you would both and not like him, but I can't <laughs> deny that that guy says some really funny shit. If you've ever seen that meme of uh, like the guy we he's talking about the dog, where he's like, you and your pet and a dog. And he doesn't walk away. God, I love that. That's is it like a life. like a TikTok thing? I think he's just a white dude podcaster slash he's been a comedian for a really long time. But that's kind of his thing right now is that he just is a very unhinged white man who's on a bunch of podcasts. Like I think one of his famous sayings right now is that he beat Down syndrome, and like people in the okay. studio are like, "What?" And he just. <laughs> Dead face goes for it. He never breaks character. Like he is fully committed to every single bit that he does. Okay. It's, all uh, right. It's terrifying and slightly impressive. Okay. Yeah. But I call that white man's comedy for sure. Maybe I'll check out some white man's comedy. Something I know nothing yeah. about. And and you can check Just out look some up, look Star up Trek his, the Next like, Generation. Best little things. Okay. I would not ever be able to listen to a podcast with him in it, but his little tiny videos I come across, I'm just like, what? No. How, does, how does he think of it? He's like, you know, uh, reindeers are just gay moose. Think about that. And then he goes on to the next topic. Okay. Oh. All right. What? I will. Think, I think I will think about that. You think about that. I'll watch Star Trek and I'll wonder if I'm supposed to understand all this stuff about space or if I'm just supposed to enjoy it and not worry too much that I'm not good at it. Good at space? Yeah, I feel like I have to be good at television shows okay, um, when okay. I'm watching them. Yep. Does that make any sense at all? We can talk. We can talk off mic about it if you want. <laughs> if, you want some, <laughs> if if you want some if you want some Star Trek pointers, I can help you with that. <laughs> that might that that might be the tism. I'm not I'm not sure, but possible. It's possible. I just it, math and science are hard and complicated, but Voltron's <laughs> very science fi Ooh. I have a question. Can I, t- I can I tell you one thing before you ask yes. that? I did like between high school and college, I did like the bear, like as little as possible as I could to get out alive math wise. And I watch I watch Star Trek fine. I watch okay, Star Trek too much. You'll be fine. Anyway, be fine. go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. You, you remember you remember the Star Trek episode of Futurama where they make a complicated allegory and then they just yes. simplify it with a real simple thing. So they, they talk about how they're going to like shoot a bunch of ion rays at the the nebulous cloud that's keeping them prisoner. And then Fry goes, oh, like putting too much air in a balloon. <laughs> yep. That's, that's, what what, I that's what they do. Oh, perfect. Then I can watch that. Yeah. And that's I'm why sitting it's here like, the best television that's ever been made. This? I don't understand. I get so confused. That's why I had to re- stop reading that Christopher Paolini book. All right. Because you guys now, first, let me ask. Comic books versus graphic novels. Do you partake in both of them? Or just one or the other? They or are, are they... fundamentally the same. Okay, that I think I agree, but I don't know because I'm not a big comic book person anymore. So I, I was like, are they essentially the same? Yeah, especially, especially modernly, they, they write stories into like five or six part pieces that will eventually be collected into a trade paperback, which is essentially a, a big graphic novel. Yeah, sometimes referred to as a graphic novel. What would you like what's the most amount of money you'd pay for a graphic novel that was like 500 pages i just spent 150 dollars on infernal girl red with the kickstarter i you okay so that is a pretty reasonable thing right i'm getting real close to my, you are. To my camera <laughs> here that? that's a lot of money what's that, 
that. Well, it, it was a Kickstarter, and there's a bunch of extra perks that came with it, and yeah, I, yeah, I'm I really mean, happy you, to have contributed. Yeah, you wanted to support the project. I'm, yeah. I'm being facetious. I mean, I, I, if I could have, I would have spent $600 so I could also get a special limited edition helmet. Yeah, Matt, get close. <laughs> but he won't get his hair cut. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is For... also like two years ago. I, I, uh... I had more money back then. I had fewer kids. That's true. It depend. It would depend on the book and like. Uh, I'm just kind of wondering, like how. How much faith must you have, like in your following overall, like as a creator, that you would be like, okay, this is what I'm going to charge for this, and this is why I bring this up because I was trying to remind Josh, hey, Matt. Do you remember Final Space? Vaguely. It came out. It came out in 2018. Uh, I think it was kind of one of those, like it was out and it got booted to another channel. It got a third season. Okay. Yeah. 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 I've not seen yeah, it, but I know like, of it. Yeah. They were like, we're done. And I watched season one. It's fucking phenomenal. I thought it was a really good show. It's so funny, but also it's like Futurama where it has, it's like, it's a comedy, but there are a lot of really intense, dramatic moments. And the animation is gorgeous. There are so many scenes where you're like, what the fuck like it's done so well but after it got canceled in that third season on a cliffhanger uh which i had not watched but i looked up so it basically they're like you're done goodbye and olin rogers is like that sucks it's my passion project i wasn't able to finish it and so basically he took like two years like trying to ask how do i do this how can i finish this what can i do and warner brothers was like all right here's the deal you can make a graphic novel and that's it. You have to self-publish it. You can't have a Kickstarter for it. You can't sell it on anything except for its own website. And no, like, no trailers, no voice, and no nothing like that. It is just the book. That's it. And you have to do it all yourself. So he's like, I'm going to set a soft cap of, like, 10,000 copies. He's like, I got to self-publish it, figure out how to do it all. But he's going to charge, like, $125. And I was like, is that reasonable? But he also said it's going to be minimum 400 pages. And he knows it's probably going to be way longer than that. I think yeah, with the, a- uh, the manufacturer, sorry, Matt, uh, with the manufactured yeah. uh, limit of 10,000 copies, I think that is part of what's driving up the cost. Plus he's yes. self-publishing. So he's got to make some money back too. So for something that size, I would say that's not a terrible price, especially if it means something to you. But yeah, if it, you, it if really you were is that up to invested you. in the show, like I'm. Just yeah, gonna, if, but I, like I heard fan, that. Like, if you're like a fan of the show, it's a kind of a member. I think a memorabilia, and it's like supporting, getting a getting that story told in the only way it's going to happen. Exactly, because that's the thing too. You know, you're never going to get anything resolved unless you go this route, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and especially but if it's going to be a small I, when print When I heard thing that, like that, I was in, I was interested. Also, to self-publish a graphic novel, whew, yeah, that, yeah, that stuff is not gonna, cheap. That's so an, that is an that is a crazy project. That's but probably more than I would spend. But I mean, if on a, on a book, personally, but I'm also not invested in that show. So like, it's true. Maybe if it was Star Trek, and there was never ever going to be Star Trek ever again, ever. And this is the only way you could find out what happens to your big, main, super great favorite character, plus all your side characters and all the story arcs going on, then would you spend that much? I don't know if I've, if altogether I, I've paid that much, but I have paid to go see live recordings of podcasts about Star Trek. So like, That's true. You know, you, you follow it's your... An investment you, in an entertainment. Yeah, you you invest in the things that you care about and... You know, only you can decide if it's worth it. But it seems like I can see why they would charge that. Yeah, I mean, and that's a lot of restrictions. I yeah. like that he said, though, he he did like a video and he goes, I don't see the restrictions here. I only see the possibilities. And I was yeah. like, that is a positive man because, wow, what a deal. <laughs> they yeah. were like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> Josh. What are you doing? Yeah, you're always asking us what we're doing, but. Now we want to know what you're doing. What are you doing, man? What are you doing, man? <laughs> what are, Josh, what are you doing? I'm trying to produce a podcast right now. God. Put um, your shirt back on. It's not a visual <laughs> media. God damn. No one wants to see that. Yeah, that's why he felt emboldened to take it off. <laughs> that's why he's wearing two layers right now. 
Yeah, exactly. So uh, I watched Miraculous Ladybug and Cat Noir, the Netflix movie with my kids. And I've seen the show. It's it's a, a modern Sailor Moon kind of show where. But worse. Yeah, it's it's not as good. It's <laughs> it, so it, bad. It's it's fine, though, but I, I don't know if I've ever heard a show that sounds as dubbed as it is, if that makes any sense. So like this is a I believe it's a French show or maybe it's a Japanese show that takes place in France. I'm not sure, but it is dubbed from whatever the original language is. It's set in Paris, but every character speaks like they're reading from dubbed dialogue and it just sounds so weird <laughs> like i there the first time i ever noticed it the first I, I wasn't paying attention to the dialogue i was just listening to like the cadence of the line delivery and i'm just like this show whatever they're watching sounds so dubbed that it makes like pokemon and all of like the old 90s stuff seem like it's perfect and so i oh, walked over and i saw this ladybug show that uh, i've heard other kids talking about uh, but Netflix released a movie, which the movie, the trailer looked gorgeous. Like it, it, the, the animation for the trailer was beautiful. So I was like, I'll sit down and watch it. And I'm sure they'll put a little bit more money into the, the syncing and voice matching and everything. And they did bring back the main cast from the show, which uh, the woman who performs the voice of Ladybug slash Marinette uh, is also the voice of Sailor Mars. Uh, or Ray from the new dubs of Sailor Moon. And she's also the voice of Darkness in the most recent anime Slade and Lewis have had me watch uh, it. Konosuba Gods something something on our wonderful world. Uh, we'll be talking about that in a few weeks. But um, I was just surprised that Marinette and Ray are the same voice actor because they, they don't sound anything alike and she doesn't seem to have a great range, but voice actors are talented like that. But the thing that threw me off with this, it wasn't the dubbing. It was the fact that it was a musical. And it happens out of nowhere. I was not nowhere. expecting you to say that at all. I, I wasn't expecting a musical out of nowhere. <laughs> she, Marinette walks out of her house after being embarrassed by her dad and then just starts singing. Like, there's not even, like, a buildup in the music. So, like, she just walks out the door, it shuts, and then she just starts singing the first few bars of the song. I don't know if you guys experience this, but whenever there's something that you're not expecting to be a musical that becomes a musical, there's like a panic that sets in. You're like, oh, God, it's a musical. I, I walked just... out of Into the Woods. I was like, <laughs> not a single trailer had singing in it. Not one trailer had singing in it. Yeah. Not one. I walked out and watched The Lady in the Water or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that was so bad. Like, you, you're not sure what to expect out of something that is not inherently a musical because from what I understand, there are musical episodes of Ladybug and Cat Noir, but for the most part, it is just a spoken word show. And for whatever reason, they decided this movie is going to be a musical. And the songs aren't bad. Like the melodies are good. The performances are good. But for the most part, the lyrics are very basic. Like it's, it's like Fry's music or Fry's opera in Futurama. It's just they're singing what they feel and it's not subtle, but it's done well. Like the, the, the melodies are pretty earwormy. So like it, it's fine for the most part. Cause you're like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was, it was a cute movie. It kind of serves as like a, an origin story and a series finale in one movie. But from what I understand, it's also kind of set outside of the TV show universe. So it's kind of like the 1995 power Rangers movie where it is power Rangers, but it's not set in the same universe or timeline it's just a, a a unique story to tell on its own interesting i keep getting a bunch of suggestions to watch that the power rangers movie counts but, it's, then it's how do you I, and i can not, prove not it it's, it's not canonical they get the ninjutsu powers or the the ninja coins separately again in the tv show this is not the podcast for this but i can prove it <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get Matt Groom on the line and he, he'll set us all straight. Yes, I, I need to know. Or Melissa Flores. I mean, she was continuity director for Saban Brands for a while. So we have contacts now, Matt. We can figure this out. Well, I can't I can't back up my talk, so I withdraw. <laughs> I'm kind of down with non like not continuity or continuity errors. I find them very interesting. 
when I see them, I'll be alone. I'll be like, different actress, different, that's not the same, <laughs> not the same, not the same. The Golden Girls is the best example of that because it was not meant to be binged. So if you watched like season one and then randomly like three seasons later, this like other per you're like, that is, that is not the actress who played Blanche's daughter. The very yeah. first time her daughter, Rebecca, she's this, oh my God, she's, the whole joke is that she's supposed to be overweight and Blanche is about, about being small, but she is like this super cute, like round faced woman with like this beautiful blonde hair. Like she's a gorgeous 80s girl. And then she's in like two episodes and then randomly it is this very tall, like that crunchy, wavy haired girl out of nowhere. She's like, Rebecca and I are on the lanai. And then it, like they go out there and I was like, that, what the fuck just happened? Becky yeah, don't well, have good continuity. They did that. Yeah. Rosanne, Becky too, well, and, and in the 80s and 90s, part of it too was that you there was a pretty safe bet. Not a safe bet, but you could never bank on everyone's on people seeing every episode. So it was like, well. I which I when you watch, it's kind of fascinating. They use like one guy to be an exterminator, a delivery man, uh, the MC of like some dance thing they went to. Rose's like longtime boyfriend is in one of the very first episodes as a completely different guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's the I think that shit is the best. I think that's yeah, great. There's... I, th that reminds me of uh, early episodes of Boy Meets World where like there's the episode where Corey wants to get rid of his curly hair and he, they like get Sean's sister to give them some supplies to straighten yes! his hair. And then we never hear about Sean's sister ever again. Sean's sister, yep. Topanga's entire family situation. They skipped like three years of high school somewhere in there. Um, <laughs> like that show is all like. All of a sudden it's gone. It oh, is yeah, Topanga had an older sister that yeah, Eric yes! fell in love with. Yeah, well, and her parent. I think her parents are like different actors at various times. They yeah. some of, so at one point they're like hippies. At one point they're like stern business people. That yeah. show, you know, flies with the seat of its pants. Kind yeah, of that one was just like who cares? Whatever. Different. We realize nobody that gives a shit crazy. about this. That '70s show. Remember, Donna had a sister. One episode, <laughs> she had a sister. Rest I think in, it's more peace. because so many of those sitcoms from the 90s and 80s didn't know if they were coming back. And so they're just like, this is going to fit our story for this week. Yep, let's and, just do and, it. And it's a yeah. sitcom. So like by the end of the episode, everything's back to normal anyway. Yeah. And, you know, people are going to see it. You know, if you get lucky, you're going to get in the syndication and people are going to watch it before school randomly or whatever. They're not going to be like tracking continuity because it was all before home video and things like that. So. Meanwhile, me with my little notepad. <laughs> TV. Go on. TV used to be good. We used to we used to we used man, to make good TV. <laughs> TGIF, man. I, I TGIF. Miss it. Saturday morning cartoons. I, one Saturday morning. Oh, yes. Fox Kids. All that stuff. We'll just rename what you do in Nostalgia Kick. I know. I was just or what TV are we watching? Apparently, yeah. This. Maybe we should <laughs> rename this episode to that. <laughs> What TV show did you watch that you just desperately want to talk about? I know oh, I, I could I, talk Perfect Strangers. That that so was much? that was my show. Perfect Strangers. I don't think I ever watched that. Yeah, that one would have been way before your time. That one, uh, I, I think, know. it ended in like 1994, 1995. Um, I still remember. I missed the the finale, the series finale, because my family wanted to go see the Tommy Bartlett show in the Wisconsin Dells. And I was Not like, Tommy Bartlett. we went on the vac we went on vacation to the Wisconsin Dells and my family's like, let's go to the Tommy Bartlett show. And I'm like, it's the last episode ever. Perfect strangers. I'm staying home and watching it or I'm, I'm staying in our hotel room and watching it. And my mom dragged me out even like 10 year old Josh, who's being belligerent because he needs to watch the final episode of perfect strangers. And uh, we get to the Tommy Bartlett show and it's sold out. They oh. won't let us in. And so I caught the wow. final five minutes of the episode. Oh, no. And that was something that stuck with me for like 20 years until Hulu brought TGIF onto their platform. And they had like Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Boy Meets World, Dinosaurs, Perfect Strangers, Family Matters, and all the other like classic step-by-step, -step, uh, all those other classic TGIF shows. And I finally watched the finale 20 some odd years later. And I was like, was it worth uh, it? <laughs> It, it was it was catharsis at the very least. You just had to know. that was like Jeremy. 
good Dharma and Greg. I had watched episodes, but I've never like watched it like through. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to see what the fuck is up with this television show. I'm just curious. And then when I finished, I was like, it was fine. And I'm glad that I watched all those episodes. Because I used to be like, what is this show? I, what's going on? Did Greg, did he ever loosen up at all? Uh, I don't think so. Not really. Why did he Greg. need to change? Greg. He was great just the way he was. He was so uptight. He was so uptight and she was such a free spirit. I know. And, th- and they fell in love. They fell in love. And that was the <laughs> end of all love stories. Forever. Now, why? how about, did she get any more responsible? Well, you, only you can answer that question. You've seen the show. She did not. <laughs> I don't think that show was really focused on growth overall. But there was a great episode about a possible haunted puppet. So that was good. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, we like, we like that one. We like that one. We're all about it. I've been Becky. in a very cartoony mood. Well, yeah. Cartoon what you doing? What, what you doing? doing? What? what you doing, Becky? I know. I'm like, don't talk about. I apparently I'm watching a ton of TV right now. That's because <laughs> I got to stop reading so much. I've been reading too much. I had to take a break, but I finished Aragon for the upteenth time. It took about three weeks to read four books. Did it get? And, was it, can I ask a question? Was Was it good this time? Did it uh, get good? Good every time. <laughs> and then I read. Can you tell by my voice the excitement? And then I read. <laughs> The, what is it? The Fork, The Witch, and The Worm. It's like a weird little companion novel that came out. Um, and I bought it, which is why I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to start from the beginning. So to that Aragon? I... It's a companion to oh, Aragon or something else. Yes. Okay. Companion to Aragon. Okay. It, it says volume one. I don't know if there's supposed to be more volumes. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Angela is based off of his own sister. So she like wrote the middle part of the book um, and did her own thing with it, which was kind of cool. And then the end of the book was like, um, they have like a icky race of uh, monsters called the Urgles. They're misunderstood. And it was all focused on them. And I was like, this is very interesting. I'm glad that he wrote this. And then Murtog comes out in November. I'm very excited. I've not been excited for a book to come out in ages. (laughs) You're going, the, pre- you're going to the midnight? I'm going to pre-order it and everything. I mm. wish they had midnights for books. I would totally do that again. I did it, I did it for the first and second Aragon. I wouldn't pick it up at midnight. We, I did that Guess for a couple of had, the Harry Potter books. There, I was out. like, we did it for Harry Potter, yep. And we did it at Borders in Rockford. Rest in peace, and, J.K. Rowling. It's too bad you vanished into the ether several yeah, years ago. <laughs> Never be no. seen again. Anybody tell those orcas about her new yacht? I don't know. <laughs> they should. Just let them know she's got that yacht. Get those orcas. Those are my favorite internet videos right now. Becky, speaking of uh, cartoons that I know you have seen that I have also seen, so we can kind of like tag team this one. Uh, Nimona. Oh, we watched, oh. That, we watched, we watched that last weekend. Did oh, you yeah, watch so it? did we. Yeah, I right. cried so hard, and I don't cry at media. Books, yes, but like television, no. I'm not no soft bitch. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh my god, she's so tough on the outside, but it's because she feels like she doesn't belong and she's weird. And I texted somebody about it, and they were like, huh, did it sound like anybody you know? I was like, no, <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> it was so good. Have you guys read the book? Head no, down. I did not. It's I made the, I made the conscious choice to watch the movie knowing that I had not read the book, but that it could be an option. I kind of just wanted to see what it was like. That that book is a book that is definitively a graphic novel because it was conceived and illustrated and written as a one volume as opposed to like a collecting a bunch of co- individual comic books like we were talking comics about before. Comics all put together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's been a long time since I read it and I, so I, I think there must be things that they change in the adaptation and the adaptation itself is like got its own kind of rocky story to actually existing. Like I think before it was on Netflix, there was some studio where like that had the movie like basically done and then Disney bought that studio and canceled the movie. Oh, so like yeah. there was a, there was like a moment where it was like, Oh, this 
completed movies. It's not going to happen now. Um, and then luckily, as much as I hate to give Netflix any credit, solidarity with striking workers, um, they picked it up and put it out and it's great. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I really yeah. liked it. It was uh, it was produced by Blue Sky Studios originally, yes. which was owned by yes. Fox. Oh, Blue, Blue, uh, yes. Blue Sky was the studio behind like the Peanuts movie, which was really good. I really enjoy that movie. Um, but yeah, Disney sacked that studio essentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Nimona is um, is very is very cool, very cute, look gorgeous. Um, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, I really I. Uh... I liked I liked how they set everything up and like the reveal and all that kind of stuff. I almost wish like you could have had more time, or it could have been just like a little bit longer. It reminded me of um, a book series that is. Oh, what is it? Oh, I'll read those next. Wolf Tower, a very random series of books, very small. I think it's the is it Phoenix publish or firebird i don't know whatever is like the firebird publishing I, I found them very randomly uh at a garage sale so i just snagged all four of them but the premise of the first book is that they're in this like beautiful tower castle thing um and it's like lovely there are like the royalty and then the non-royalty but for the most part like there's these big walls and then this very dashing hero comes in and he's like i came from over the wall and then you're like, oh, like the uh, over the wall is like evil. It's all sorts of bad stuff. And then they, <laughs> so I, I was like, oh, I like this. Like that's that's just like a kind of a premise that I really like. Of like, we have your best interests at heart. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, but do you? I don't know why, but it gets me every time. That's one of my favorite tropes. The giver is like that. I like that trope. I would really like to revisit Nimona, the book. I know I have a copy on here somewhere. I highly recommend it. It was written and illustrated by. Uh, someone named N.D. Stevenson, who in the years since the book was originally published, has come out as, I believe, I don't I don't know exactly how they identify, so I apologize in advance, but um, I believe they are a transgender man. Um, and with that in mind, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a cisgender heterosexual man, so I only, my knowledge of this stuff only goes so far. But you can kind of, you wonder if there's like some, if they were working through some stuff by, with this book, unknowingly or unknowingly, by virtue of the fact that it's about this person who like can just make their body whatever they want um, and things like that. So I'm and curious. I'm like, it's, not, it's not really a spoiler to say the line. Josh can edit this out if it is, but when when it, people keep saying "just be a girl," yeah, yes, that yeah. got that got me. That did. I was yeah. like, "Oh, I see that. I, I see that." Because because and they keep going, "I'm just Nimona. like that's I'm just right. this. I'm not this thing that you think I am." Yeah. So, yeah, so would, the the author goes by N. D. Stevenson, Nate Diana Stevenson. Um, they were also he was also a, a producer, executive producer on Shira. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. So I would be curious to revisit the book with that, you know, sort of context in mind, which nobody could have known when the book was published because that was not, I don't think that they were even, he was even out at that point. Um, so yeah, just an interesting, interesting story. I'm very glad that it finally got made and finally is out. We all liked it. Yay. I know when I saw the trailers, I was like, I don't know about this. This looks dumb. Yeah, one and thing I forgot I to just did it. One thing I forgot to mention last week when uh, Alex, Greg, and I were talking about uh, Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem, uh, I was going to say if you are not interested in getting out to the theaters to see a movie about uh, a social outcast who the the world society views as a monster, just watch Nimona. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, I I, I could see that. Basically, the same concept. Oh, I should have a movie. Game. Yeah, I, was, I want I want to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Is it worth seeing in theaters? It wasn't for me. It, it's it, it's um, not in the sense of like I don't think it was good. I think it was. It's definitely geared towards a younger crowd. Uh, but there are some weird like well, the kids who grew up with the Ninja Turtles in the eighties and 90s, late eighties, early nineties 
are now the parents of the people going to see this movie in theaters. So we'll have some modern day references like BTS, and we'll have some old references like Hey Arnold and uh, Shrek. Mm, interesting. Why do you do that in your movie at all? It's a weird mix of like trying to nostalgia blast you while also trying to tell a new modern interpretation of the turtles. But I, I thought it was fun overall. It, it's it's enjoyable. The the four turtles are really good. Uh, I like the idea of them being uh, teenagers and actually being portrayed as teenagers, not just like super mature roid heads or just rage addicts. I can see that. Uh, so I was, uh, I like all the, we were talking about with like Borderlands when people are like, the graphics aren't good. And it's like, it's the art style and the art direction. Yep. How do you not understand that? That's what it is. I feel like a lot of like, there's like been a weird little pool of things I've watched that have all had such vastly different animation like styles, but all of them very good in their own right. And like a, a theater in the movies that looks like the Ninja Turtles does. Like I watched just the trailer when I saw the Barbie movie. And I was just like, that's really cool. That's pretty awesome looking. Like yeah, I the, the movie is gorgeous. Gorgeous. The movie, it, it's it's uh the animation house behind it is the one that also created the Mitchells versus the Machines, which is another Netflix movie. Yeah. If you haven't movie. seen it, you should. It's so good. That movie is so good. But yes, you're right. This, I think things for such a long time looked, they all looked like a Pixar movie. And if it didn't look like a Pixar movie, it looked like that's a DreamWorks movie. That's a Pixar movie. Like you, you could just tell. They had such a specific look and then it was boring because they all looked the same and they were just kind of recycling random ones. They Spider-Man really just opened yeah. a lot of doors for people being able to take chances with art style. And like you can tell still a really good story and be a lot more interesting looking than just, okay, these all look the same. Yeah. So Matt, what you doing? Oh boy. You know, um, I'm still playing the hell out of Zelda. Josh's Tears favorite the, game. Tears of the Kingdom. I, I wasn't going to bring it up. Uh, well, I was going to say, Matt, you'll be proud of me because that, that was going to be my last uh my last what you doing but now i'll have to find another well, one that you don't have we could, we could let's just talk about it um, talk about it together like friends tears of the kingdom it rules um you know i think i am at which is su- surprising because i am a new parent but i'm at 120 hours with it and still chugging along and yeah, damn. Part, part of that is that i think it's very easy to because it's on the switch i can do that while other things are happening as opposed to having to sit in front of my tv and play on a console, which I have much less time to do these days. Um, but yeah, it's it's just good. It's you know, you if you if you're listening to this, odds are you are aware of what this game is. But you know, it's a follow up to the last Zelda game, Breath of the Wild. It's open world. It's um, kind of taking everything that that game was and expanding on it and kind of reframing it in interesting ways. Um, and like to the degree that Breath of the Wild is a game about like kind of giving you all the tools you need at the outset to do anything in the game. And also because of the way that the systems are built, they interact in ways that can be broken easily. Interestingly, if you are creative and thoughtful with them, Tears of the Kingdom takes that and sort of triples down on it where like almost all of the new, the new abilities, the new um, additions, the changes are all geared toward like that to the max um, after just, you know, real them realizing how interesting and cool that was for people in breath of the wild. I think anyway, Josh, where are you at? Uh, I just finished the fire temple. I have completed the water, air and fire temple now. Cool. Um, I've collected all of the tiers of the kingdom, uh, which I'm I'm extraordinarily invested in that side of it. Like the, the yeah. Zelda storyline, I I thought was really good. And I'm excited to see how the that part of the story ends up. But I could get the master. Give, did you get the master sword yet? Yes, I got the master okay. sword. OK, um, but I could not give two flying fucks about the uh, the sages. Those cutscenes are too long and they're <laughs> very uninteresting. Like, it's, I get it. You're joining my party. Like, let's let's go. Yeah, we're 
this is going on for 15 minutes to basically just say, I used to be the sage and now you will be the well, sage. Well, it's interesting because you, you kind of see they're all, they are all kind of the same. Be, and part of that I think is, be, and some of that is like the structure of the game being like, you know, you're, you're seeing the fire temple third, somebody's seen it first, you know, like because yeah. of the way the game is structured that's introducing you to the concept of, Oh, this is what happened to the sages. And they have to make sure that whichever order you see it in, it's giving this information, which is not to, yeah. not to defend it. I think it's a valid criticism that that is annoying, but it's also like, I see why it's like that, but it is like, okay. <laughs> no, that's a great point. But yeah, I, ever since the second one, I, I realized like, Oh, this is the same as the last one. I'm just going to skip this now. Yeah, um, I did the, uh, I've done all four of them at this point and that doesn't change <laughs> surprisingly that doesn't change at the last one yeah hey, um oh like they, they can't tell like if you already had one there's probably ways you know i'm not a game developer obviously but developer. there's probably ways You're that, not? Like, no, no, no 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 i'm sorry <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sure i'm sure they they kept that sort of thing out of it just because that would take up so much memory to i was be gonna able say to, probably, to adapt and it. i know they have a like a issue with that anyway yeah but and um in the best way Speaking of Tears of the Kingdom and the Sages, the the Air Sage Tulin is also voiced by Ladybug and Mar uh, Sailor Mars voice actress. Oh, cool! I was watching a cutscene and noticed um, that they flap around and hold their he holds his bow and his little talons, but his arms are wings. So yeah, he's gotta and pull he shoots. Back, he's got to he pull back his, his, with his feet. Well, he's got he's got to pull back the bowstring with his little beak. I thought that was very cute. Oh, huh. I thought he just there's pulled a, it back with his other foot. There's a cutscene where you see him again, and he's got his bow out, and he's like, "It's in his little beak." And I was like, "That's cute, little mm. guy. Thanks for interesting. Thanks for <laughs> blowing me around so much when I'm on my paraglider. I appreciate it. Uh, you are great. Thanks so much. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I don't think my early criticisms of the game are not without merit. Sure. I, I do not care for the Minecraft Minecraftiness of the game, but to your point, Matt, you can just completely bypass it and yeah. you're, you're not missing a whole lot from the game. There are some levels and some portions of like shrines and other things where they're like, you need to build something. And it's like, fine, I will do it. But it, it does become less of a hassle after so long. Like I'm probably 30 or 40 hours into the game. And like, uh, I just did a temple where I had to build like a ramp and I had to build uh, a ledge and a few other things with like the same materials. I'm like, fine, okay, I get it. But uh, it's not integral to anything in the game as far as the story goes. So I, I just have learned to deal with it when I can. Yeah, and that's the beautiful, I think that's probably the thing, and we've talked about this before previously in our Discord plug, where it is a game where for, for the most part, it has all these systems and it lets you engage with it to the degree that you want to for the most part with you know, it's, it's trying to get you to, to buy into it a little bit. You know, I, I'm sure if you're, if you're listening to this, I'm sure you've seen videos of people like creating these insane contraptions with this crafting system they've built, like mechs and laser shooting airplanes that attack enemies and stuff. Those are all things you can do, but it's not like a thing where you have to do it, right? Like for the most part, all that stuff is, you don't have to use it. If you do, odds are we're going to give you exactly what you need to make the most basic thing to get you by nearby. Or it's in a shrine where like the point is you have to think through what you have to do to do it and the stuff is all there. And even in those situations, say, say you go into a shrine and the whole thing is like, oh, build a contraption to get you up to the, to the top of this tall ledge, right? Whatever that might be. Or use the, use the mechanics, the... The, uh, the physics to do this. If you happen to go in there with a shield that has a rocket attached to it, odds are you just pull that thing out. It'll shoot you right up. <laughs> like there are ways in which you can bypass this stuff. If you are really creative, um, it's a game that like, you know, it, 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 su it supports whatever, however much you want to put into it. And it is like not judgmental about, that level of commitment right where like if you just want to play it like breath of the wild for the most part you mostly can with some changes you know like they've added in the 
that they added in a couple new areas, the sky stuff, the depths. There are certain points in the story where like you have to engage with both. And there are like things that you can only get by engaging with those areas that are useful, I think. But aside from that, you know, the fire temples in the depths. Aside from that, if you don't want to be in the depths, don't worry about it. It's good. You're fine. Yeah, and that, that's pretty much all I got to say about it. Um, I'm, I'm having fun with it until the point where they force something on me that like they, they make me build something like uh, there are occasions where I feel like I really want to try and help the guy that has to hold up the, the President Hudson signs. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to put a stick on a post and that's going to be it if it's not a moving on. <laughs> Yeah, with that guy, I'm like, that, you know what? That would be like me. Can I can I do this in one or two tries? And if I can't, do I see the path to it in those one or two tries? And if the answer to both of those is no, I'm like, sorry, I'll see you at the next one. Yeah. But overall, I, I think that it is a more engaging story than yes. I think Breath of the Wild was, where I have always, my, my joke that I've made about Breath of the Wild is that it's the best tech demo I've ever played. Because <laughs> if you, if you didn't seek out those like twelve memories and find all the journals, there's no story to that game other than Ganon's in the castle. Go get him. Yeah. Yeah, that I was interested. I didn't play it, but I was like, I watched it be played. That was one of those games where I was like, I don't like how it looks. Personally, don't enjoy that art style. The graphics are terrible. I know it's too bright. It's too bright. It's so You know bright. it has day cycles, right? So there's like a nighttime and a, a No. A, there's like a dusk and a dawn and there, there's in between. washed out at every point of time in that game. Have you, did, I you check your TV, did you check your TV settings? I think it's either your TV or your phone that you're watching I this did, on. I swear and I've watched like videos of it cuz I'm like am I missing something here? Like I don't like this and like yeah, like even like the horses, I don't like how they look or like how they interact with like the rest of the game. I just, I don't know. I just am not into it. And I love Zelda. I love all of them. It was so weird to me that I was just like, I don't enjoy this. So I was I have watching an entire okay. stable right. of blue horses. Yes. And I like naming them for other people. Uh, and that was my favorite part of Red Dead Redemption too, was naming the horses for other people. Uh, I didn't want to be any part of that. But I watched it and I was like, wait, you don't you don't know what's going on unless you go get these like memories. You have to go get them. They're not just like you have to, but you can if you want to. I don't understand. That's the beauty of it. It that, gives see, you complete I was freedom like, to like, engage as you see fit. See, and I'm like, I want to know what's going on. What's the story? Why? Final Fantasy 13, I think, did that. Where it was like, oh yeah, this is, um, we're on Cocoon. You can read about it if you want. They never explain it. But you can go to the sub menu and like read all of this shit about Cocoon. And I'm like, why is this not in the game? Those are I don't, and then they'll like throw another reference out there. And you're like, I have to go read about this? And I like reading, but I was like, what the fuck? I'm so confused. It's Listen, world building. I'm, I'm an well, idiot. Like, you gotta build that <laughs> world for me. You're you're making me defend Breath of the Wild, which I I mean I don't like doing other than the fact that I think it's it, the mechanics of that game are fantastic. It's yes, one of the few are. open world games that is actually it's, open world. It's open world, and it they do a great job of filling out the world in a way that you want to continue to traverse it. Because like I know I I lost hours playing that game because I just wanted to get to the next shrine, and then I'd get find another shrine like on my way, and like completing those shrines was just like getting me that endorphin high of like collecting, uh, getting all the hearts and whatever else. And uh, then I realized that if you completed all the shrines, you get like the original Legend of Zelda uh, suit. So you get, you get like the big green cap, the the Daisy Dukes and the tunic. And I was just or like, okay, yeah. That... Happen to have spent hundreds of dollars in Amiibo. Yes. You get dozens of those. <laughs> I know that that's kind of interesting to me too. Like, yeah, you you can do it. Like there's like a hard way or if you have the money and you can have the Amiibos, like that's a, a different in line to the game, which I think is interesting as far as like modern games go. I was like, Hmm, I don't know how I feel about this. I would never buy any Amiibos. So I just don't get any of this stuff. Damn it. Like, 
<laughs> Matt, I have a Matt, I have a question for you. I know you're yeah. looking for the um uh what the hell's the name of it? Um what was the Wii Zelda? Skyward Sword. You had the uh the Zelda with her bird amiibo that you were looking for. Did that get you anything in Tears of the Kingdom? I th- I believe so the way it works in Tears of the Kingdom, all of the Zelda specific amiibo will give you a like a bunch of crafting materials, whether that's like food like food or mushrooms or whatever, plus a chest that will have maybe some kind of a weapon, possibly like um like a pristine weapon that is not like degraded. Like it will break, but it's like not the one that's like decayed by story purposes. Um it may also come with like a special costume item or it may come with a fabric for like your paraglider because you can switch those up. So like the the various links, I have all the, I just happen to have all the links for that because I think they're neat. You know, many of those will give you pieces to various outfits that look like different link costumes from various games. So I've got one that's like, ocarina of time i've got one that's you know the the classic style you mentioned the thing like that all that is to say yes and i believe that the main like rare item you get from that one is just like a a a fabric which you can customize your thing with but also like you know you're getting a pile of other crafting materials and usually like a chest that has like a ruby or an item or a weapon inside of it too and isn't there one where you can get like Wolf Link as a companion from Twilight Princess? Unfortunately, that was only in Breath of the Wild. I but like there that. Is, in Breath there of is the a Wild. that's cool. Yeah, there is a Wolf Link amiibo that came with the Wii U re-release of Twilight Princess. You summoned him in. If you tapped him in Breath of the Wild, it would give you a whole ass Wolf Link who would hang out with you and be your companion. Um. Yeah, unfortunately, in Tears of the Kingdom, it is only he just gives you a bunch of meat, which you know I get. He's a wolf. I get it. I have to assume it has something to do with the fact. I have to assume it has something to do with the fact that you can like go to the sky or into the caves and stuff now. But that was the thing where I was like, ah, that's a bummer. That was my buddy. amplest minor spoilers. You are acquiring companions throughout the game as well. Yes. Yeah. You you already roll kind of like four deep if you would like to. That, that actually, I was going to say, if they, they probably just switched them up so it's something that's a little bit more permanent. Because the Wolf Link thing was really cool. I, the, the whole Amiibo system is neat. But I'm also not a collector of things in games. So that whole idea of it is vastly uninteresting to me. I'm not a, I'm not a crafter or a builder. If it's not a complete weapon, I'm like, what? what's the point of this? If it's like, this is cool, but you can only use it seven times, I'm like, well, that's frustrating and annoying to me <laughs> it's all it's all part of the beauty all your criticisms are actually just the beauty of the of these games now i'm criticizing myself more than the game if that makes sense i'm criticizing the way that i wish i could fully enjoy stuff like that but i just can't like i love final fantasy 10 2 you had two accessories and that was it and the minute the minute you upgraded to the silver and you were done with the bronze, sold every fucking bronze thing that I had. Goodbye, see you later. Never come back to you ever it's, again. It's totally fine. You know, like what you like. What hits you is what hits you. I just think that stuff where like, oh, the weapons break or this, you know, you got to go find the story stuff. You know, I'm also someone who likes to, to make sure I get that stuff. But it's like, oh, yeah, it's, you have a, a, a collector. Yeah. Part of, part of the is, beauty of it is, is that cool. it's letting you like find find the story as you see fit, which I think is is one of the, the nice things about it's that u- game. It's unique. It's very different. Especially in contrast to other open world games where like, you know, I, I like I like the Assassin's Creed games, right? But a lot of them are you open a map and it is a million little icons telling you things to do because they don't want you to miss anything because you spent $60 in the game and they put a bunch of time into it and they want you to, they want people to play it. Cover so I get it that. Off. Yeah, I get that. But it, you know, there's something about breath of the wild where it's like, this stuff is in here there. It's there for you to find it. We want you to discover this stuff. I was actually, that's so you said Assassin's Creed. Cause I was literally just about to say 
Although I don't like the opposite where I did not like in Assassin's Creed where it's like, here are all of the treasure chests. Yeah. That's not what treasure chests are for. Yeah. You're supposed to find them. Yeah. That's why it's, cause you're supposed to be like, oh shit, I was exploring. There's a treasure chest. Yep. I hated that they were on the map because then it became just like a checklist game. Check, yeah. I got this. Check, I got that. Instead of like, oh fuck, there is a treasure chest on top of this roof because I was climbing all the roofs because that's what the game is. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I ran into this little cave and at the end of it, there is like a treasure chest. And oh, there's a cool piece of gear that i would not have like i don't i don't yeah. need it but it looks cool and that stuff i, I like it. i think yeah. that's, a, that's i think that is the way to do it that's the beauty of those games i think anyway all right great game yeah. i'm loving it matt Bada you got rebecca off her high horse so i think that's a good place to end i didn't i didn't say it was a bad <laughs> game i just said i don't like how it looks and it's not for you're, me. you're climbing I'm back on that watching. high horse you're, you're climbing back up there we got to get going <laughs> I enjoyed watching it while well, I was getting on my horse so I could gallop on out of here with my correct opinions. Did you, did you steal that switch yet? No. Oh, come on. I guess she still uses it. She still uses it. Tell her to stop. But I can't. She likes it. And they live in Arizona, so that won't work. It's a very far trip to go steal shit. I could fly there. All right, well... We're we're getting out of here. So uh, yeah. thanks everyone so much for listening. Uh, please follow the podcast at Talking Smack Pod on all social media platforms, including Instagram, Threads, Hive Social, Post News, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and of Face course, it. whoops, I'll get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what face it is. Uh, that scared in, me. Also, including Lonnie's website. Uh, don't forget to join our Discord, Matt. Please let everyone know about the Discord. Uh, the Discord is a Discord. It's, it's a it's a chat room where we all hang out. And, you know, if you like the rambling diversions and me going off too long ram and rambling, um, but you want that in text form, that's the Discord all over. I am not very good at my day job, so I'm on there all day. <laughs> um, if you say something, odds are I'm going to see it right away and I'm prepared to respond to it. Matt is the Discord while Josh is the podcasting. <laughs> Thank you so much to Leo Allen. <laughs> Thank you so much to Leo Allen for our musical themes, Beppo for our original avatars, Virtual Studios for our Ricky avatar. Please like, subscribe, rate, comment, review, do whatever you do. Uh, but most of all, thanks so much, everyone, for listening. Becky, Matt, thanks so much for your time. And most importantly for everyone, take care. Watch Star Trek. I have tried.